Welcome everyone to another episode of the Campus Waterfowl Podcast. I'm your host Derek Christians and this week uh, for the Collegiate Waterfowl Tour we have another live podcast here at Texas A&M University. We are currently, this is a first for the tour and the podcast, uh, we're sitting outside recording so uh, just be aware that you may hear some planes flying overhead, you may hear some dogs barking, you may hear the neighbors working on some home projects but um, if you hear that just we're, out, we're sitting outside. And another thing if you enjoy watching podcasts uh, we're actually recording this so this will be on our youtube channel and uh, um, if you're watching the youtube video make sure to tune in to spotify and apple Podcasts if you're not able to finish the podcast on youtube so um, other than that thank you again uh, you guys know who the companies are but thank you again to ken cartridge tetra hearing ducks unlimited drake waterfowl uh, for those companies and and onyx onyx hunt that hunting app so um Thank you to those companies for allowing us to be able to travel around, visit these colleges, and meet students across the country and sharing their hunts on YouTube. So, uh, truly, thank you to those companies for letting letting us do that. So, um, let's get started on this podcast. Uh, today, I am sitting with one, two, three, four members of the Texas A&M Aggie Land uh, Ducks Unlimited chapter here. Uh, but let's, you guys want to introduce yourself to, to everyone? Sure. Mm -hmm. Howdy, my name is Jake Willman, uh, Texas A&M Ducks Unlimited. Howdy, my name is Will Kiner, I am uh, also a member of Texas A&M Ducks Unlimited. Howdy, my name is Stephen Fuquay, uh, I'm Vice President for Texas A&M Ducks Unlimited. Um, howdy, my name is Christian Crocker, I'm also one of the officers in A&M Ducks Unlimited. Awesome. What are you guys going to school for? Uh, I'm an engineering major, uh, doing robotics. Robotics, nice. I am a rangeland ecology and management major, it's junior year. Yeah, uh, so I am also a rangeland ecology and management major, so basically range management uh, with a soil science minor. Um, I am also <laughs> a rangeland ecology and management major. Uh, yeah, exactly what Steven said, but I don't have a minor because I'm I'm fun like that. So, <laughs> it's the odd man has one. Yeah, yeah. Hey, it's really rare that you got three range three. major. There's like a hundred of us, and like a, a yeah. school f with yeah. sixty thousand <clears throat> students, and you and there's like a hundred of us, and you got three of us. Three, in you got three percent. Yeah. In one, <laughs> in one, <laughs> in one, one location. <laughs> Is that? Do you think? Are there a lot of? Uh, you said yeah, range majors in the DU chapter. Uh, I don't know if we have any. No, I think it's just us. You just happened to get us. We, see a lot of, we, we uh, have a lot there. in our in our college, though. Wildlife and fisheries. There's a lot of That's wildlife and fisheries. Yeah. Like, yeah. 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 So different majors. Same within department. The, the department. Different yeah. major. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah. Nice. Uh, so, I guess let's start with a recap. Today is Saturday. We had a day of hunting already. And uh, let's start. I got here Thursday. So, let's, let's, talk, let's start out with Thursday. Um, it was their annual banquet here in town, so made it uh, to is it Brian Brian College Station. The, yeah, Brian College uh, Station, yeah. Texas. So uh, made it to the, their annual banquet, and it was a fantastic event. Uh, hats off to you guys for putting uh, and your entire chapter for putting us uh, putting together a awesome uh, event like that. Um, what kind of let's talk about kind of the the uh, planning phases of a banquet. How much time do you guys think you guys put into putting Oof. together that banquet? Way too much. Um, <laughs> but now we probably started uh, two, three months ago. Uh, tried to put in a few hours every week at the beginning, and then towards the end there, it got more like a part-time job almost. Uh, a lot of <laughs> hours just kind of working on it, getting everything together, making sure you don't miss a thing. Mm -hmm. uh, just trying to make sure everything's set in place so when the actual event happens, it goes smoothly. Yeah, I think we started we started in August, so we started before fall semester, and we, yeah, like you said, we kind of, it was kind of like, get a game plan going, like, beginning of August, so we kind of know what we're doing, and get, like, start building lists for potential donors, potential sponsors, and everything, and then the rest of that time was reaching out to people, making sure we get all the, everything ordered that we need, and contacting all of the attendees and, and, and all those people, which can be tough because mm -hmm. it's a lot of uh, voicemails and emails and mm -hmm. follow-ups, but 
it's just an ongoing process all the way up until I feel like it's to the last minute of the event. It's yeah, and then like that year. last week, you like get like a ton of people, and it's just like, why, why didn't this work out? Why, why wasn't this happening like way back when? But like you tell them it's a week away, and then like, oh yeah, okay, we'll do it now. Okay. Like, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, uh, no, go ahead. I, I was in charge of check in um, at the banquet, and like we had people walk in at five thirty, doors open at six, and like, hey, I have a last minute donation, and we're like. We don't know where to put it, but thanks, we'll figure it out. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. <laughs> yeah. Like, thanks, you couldn't have done this in August. <laughs> yeah. or, we're thank, or, we're or, thankful yeah, for all it, of them. It was but, great. It was yeah, a absolutely. great event. Mm-hmm. How many people do you guys think attended? We have, uh, uh, so we had pre-sale tickets and then walk-in tickets probably put us to about 500 people. We were, yeah, we were close right. to a little below, a little above the 500 mark. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's a good event. Yeah, it was, it was a really nice turnout. Mm-hmm. Is it? Is it? How does that make you feel, kind of seeing everyone uh, together again, kind of after last year? Did you guys have a banquet last year? Yeah, we did. Uh, we did. Very, it was nowhere near as big. Really? Yeah, I think it was our last year's banquet was half the size of, of this year's yeah. banquet. Yeah. So last year the Expo Center limited us to half capacity, and so this year having everything back like open completely, like we're no COVID restrictions. We didn't have to wear a mask at all the entire time. Mm-hmm. It was awesome, but. I mean, everyone that came, came up to, like, the officers at least. I mean, I got it multiple times, like, hey, thanks. Like, this is a great event. Mm -hmm. I mean, everyone seemed really happy, which, I mean, at the end of the day, that's what we want. We want to, you know, have everyone coming and leaving the event happy and raising a lot of money for the Ducks. And I think that we did all three of those. Absolutely. And going into it with an estimated number of attendees being around 400 is what we're, you know, hoping for. That would be, like, a nice goal. And beating that by about 100 was yeah. a really nice exceeding awesome. expectations. Yeah. Man, you just about kicked the mic I'm off. So sorry. Sorry. <laughs> listeners are going to hear that. <laughs> um, yeah, no, it's it was a great event. That's a lot different than what I was what I'm used to. So being up in South Dakota, we had the SDSU event, and uh, this event was a uh, yeah a lot bigger than the one we would have up there. But uh, no, hats off to you guys and your entire chapter. You guys did a great job. It was very, very well organized. It didn't look like anyone was running around. It didn't look like it, but I'm sure in, yeah. <laughs> in, on the inside you guys might have been, but you guys did a great job. So um, hats off again to you guys. Appreciate and if, if anyone you. is uh, interested out there in possibly starting a DU chapter or getting involved with their chapter, I'd be happy to help. Uh, the, a lot of those chapters have Instagram accounts, so I recommend you guys reaching out that way. Or if you're interested in starting a DU chapter, feel free to reach out. I, I can get you in contact with, with the right people. So be happy to help there. So... Yeah. Um, Let's go into hunting. What happened this morning? Uh, let, but before we do that, what did you guys see leading up to this weekend? Kind of scouting. What was scouting like huh. leading up to this weekend? Um, so, actually, so where we hunted, well, okay, so background on where we hunted. So we hunted in Eagle Lake, Texas, uh, which is pretty renowned for duck hunting, especially, like, teal season, like, really really good. Um, him and I, Will, we uh, hunted uh, opening weekend and normally Which like was last week yeah last weekend so uh normally we see like a lot of birds like so many birds you're like oh my gosh i've never seen this many ducks in my life and we didn't see that we saw plenty of birds but we didn't see that and uh so we were still thinking we'd we'd find some birds and everything mm-hmm. uh but yeah that did not happen <laughs> which is honestly i'm just throwing this out here my snapchat memories we had a six-man limit to do uh Yesterday. A year ago today, or no, a year ago yesterday, and there's like only three things we changed <laughs> since we were there, and it's y'all. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Uh, yeah, no, uh, did not have the birds we wanted to. And granted, we did see birds, but there was also a uh, a very large feed, like half a mile from us. Yeah. So that competing with live birds and everything, we did not shoot any birds because we that didn't work out and then we also scouted around college station uh derek and i went and drove around mm-hmm. yesterday for about two hours and we saw one duck yeah one duck we did see five driving we did see five we saw five ducks driving <laughs> home <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, Which, a, I mean, that, that's an improvement yeah that's more than one numbers are going it's up. more than one yeah. one thing i did not better. know is like before coming to texas and m and was like i get pictures sent in all the time from this area from aggies and texas and, m, and it's like you think that's like awesome hunting, like right around the college. Well, you guys, it doesn't seem like that's the case. Like you guys are having to travel a lot of the times. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
and or going back home and things like that. Um, and so being able to see that now, witnessing that, and now be able being able to kind of share that with people, I think it shows just how uh, how important waterfowl hunting is to you guys. Like you guys are Absolutely. able are willing to go way out of your way compared to other students um, to yeah scrape scrape out a, a limit or, or get a few birds or if mm -hmm. if any yeah, so, hey, yeah but regardless it was really fun hunting with you guys this morning and i'm looking forward to uh tomorrow's hunt yeah let's touch absolutely. on that a little bit what can people expect in in the next video next few videos yeah so and then uh, you can share what kind of the plan is after the podcast as well this evening saturday yeah, evening sure so uh tomorrow uh we will be hunting at a ranch that i uh, work at it's a 700 acre ranch in Hallettsville, Texas. Uh, we are, I'm, I'm the manager out there, so I do a lot of pretty uh, intense management uh, for uh, white tailed deer, uh, starting to do turkeys, and then uh, waterfowl. And so we'll be hunting out there, and I'll talk, I'll talk about the management stuff in the next or in the other video. Yeah, I yeah. think so. Okay, yeah. cool. Yeah, so then. Uh, we have a 30 acre pond that we'll be hunting. Uh, we completely drain it and then do some management stuff to it and flood it. And we'll be hunting out of a pit blind over there and him and I have hunted there before. Mm -hmm. He went with me on a not great hunt, which was during like opening second split in Texas is always kind of rough. And so him and I kind of went out there, but normally this time of year, I, we always do great. So we'll be just seeing a lot of pintail, uh, teal, uh, spoonbills, mm -hmm. widgeon, gadwall. Might get lucky with some wood ducks, and even my boss, uh, the ranch owner, went out last weekend and he shot some mallards, which is pretty rare for. Yeah, mallards. I yeah. Didn't know that either. Mallards are uh, very rare for this area. And low supply. Low yeah. supply. Yeah, yeah, low supply. Um, <laughs> Not for you. Yeah, being being from uh, North Texas, uh, around Dallas area, like. The, the first place I started hunting was Lake Texoma, and all we would get was ringnecks, mallards, and we had two pintail the entire season. And until I moved down here, like, I thought mallards were everywhere, and I also thought Canada's were everywhere. But apparently <laughs> Can Canada geese will not go past Dallas, I've heard. No. Um, I had never seen a snow goose or a speckle belly goose, like, while hunting until I came down to college, like, to A&M. Yeah, yeah. And now that's all that all, all the geese we see i mean we see a ton of crane too yeah. uh, obviously a great example this morning yeah um but i think when people think of crane hunts most of the time they're thinking lubbock or like panhandle yeah um but down this way there's a ton and i mean Absolutely. i i had a pretty good crane hunt last year south texas is, is really good too yeah a lot of time <laughs> we got two yeah, planes by, by the way, way there <laughs> yeah we live close planes. to an airport so <laughs> there's some plane noises it's back to back here yeah <laughs> no yeah, yeah that surprised me that yeah there's no mallards out here i knew i kind of got a sense that there weren't any canadas uh after there, hearing a lot of students from like arkansas and things like that so i, I heard yeah you gotta you gotta be in lubbock there used to be like really so my my dad was a guide and in the uh, late 90s and they used to shoot lessers all the time hmm. in, in Katy Prairie which is yeah. no longer it's all development now but back when yeah. Katy had rice they would shoot lessers all the time yeah. but my, my dad grew up outside of Katy and he always tells the stories about um, he lived kind of north of town which was completely rice all rice at that time and um, he would sit out in the hayfield outside the house and just shoot passing Canadians just out of the hayfield. Not no setup. You just sitting there. They're not. And they're not Canadians. It's they're Canada. 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 Sorry, Canada sorry, Canada. sorry, sorry, sorry. Oh, <laughs> and shoot <laughs> Canadians. Not, <laughs> well, not, no. No. not humans. No. No. <laughs> um, yeah, but yeah, you, you don't get any of that anymore. None of that happens here anymore. So why why do you think that is? Uh, the exact reason that there's no ducks in Katy anymore. Development, all the rice fields, all the rice. I mean, they're selling land by the square foot where, where we're from. I mean, wow. these farmers are becoming millionaires, billionaires off mm -hmm. of selling this land. Mm -hmm. and, and so they're selling the rice and no rice, no food, no birds. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so it's all, most of it pretty much is all neighborhoods now or, yeah. or factories. Mm -hmm. yeah. So we, we drive around in Katy and my dad like, 
man, I used to hunt in that neighborhood right there because it used to be rice fields, and he'll just point out all the different uh, houses and stuff where they, he used to hunt and everything. Mm -hmm. So it's pretty, it's unfortunate, it's, but mm -hmm. I guess. It was Matt that was hunting with us this morning, right? Yes. yes. Um, I heard him heard him say a lot this morning, oh, the kind of the flyways are, things are shifting. Yeah. What are your thoughts on that? And I hear I hear that a lot. So uh, flyways are shifting. What do you What do you think? So, to yes, he yeah. So yes, definitely, I, I agree. He Matt is, was just talking about how the ducks normally find Eagle Lake. Yeah. But uh, I mean, I don't. We kind of get less and less birds, and and the way the birds fly keeps kind of changing. Mm -hmm. A couple. I mean, like five, ten years ago, the ducks would gradually move through Texas and they take their time and everything. The Texas birds now, they will go one place, cold front, Mexico. Like they don't, they don't stick yeah. around. So you, you're you hunting in Texas really revolves around getting new birds and, and hunting the cold front. Weathers. Yeah. yeah I, I think it's more weather dependent more than flyway shifting. Um, not that, I'm, you know, it's not happening. Mm -hmm. um, but I mean, talk, just talking to people at third term, uh, about it too. They're saying that like, uh, we're, we're, who was it? I think guys from University of uh, no, Nevada. Um, they were saying like, their weather is not the same as it was, and like they're seeing less ducks or whatever. Like whenever it's colder, they're seeing more. Like I feel like that's the same here. Like we've been having warmer and warmer duck seasons the last few years. Like it's November thirteenth, and it was extreme like extreme cold snaps. Just yeah, yeah, like yeah. random well, cold fronts. Like it's November thirteenth, and it was fifty degrees. Yeah, right now it's sixty-seven. I think I saw it before the podcast. Yeah. Yeah. I would yeah. like, and you say that, but then once duck season closes, it gets extremely cold. Like the amount of we have more birds at once duck season closes than any other time. Right, and that that's what I'm saying. Like weather dependent. Like mm. if if it got colder earlier, or if our season was pushed. You know, we'd be we'd be killing a lot more ducks, but you can't push it because they're going to be all paired up by then. Yeah. And we don't want to, you know, obviously, like conservation-wise, we don't want to interrupt the breeding. Um, or just wintering. Or and, and yeah, wintering mi or migration. migration yeah, mm -hmm. the migration back. Um, I mean, coming from North Texas, like, whenever it was a, I mean, it's a lot colder up there than it is here. Um, I think Matt said it was. 34 in Stephenville this morning when we left. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, yeah. it's way colder than it is here. At I time, mean, I but. I would see ducks starting to come, like, a good number of ducks starting to come down, like, beginning of January, and down here we don't see them until, like, the last week or two. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What do you guys look for um, when, say, like, this last, uh, like, just yesterday, um, there was a huge snowstorm up north in the Dakotas and Minnesota. And mm -hmm. I, can't, I don't know how big the storm was, but... I know I was getting picture sent in from hunters up there. Does that get you guys excited, or you're like, okay, now we just need we need about three more of those big storms to keep pushing them yeah, south? Yeah, exactly. I think we need that to yeah to carry all the way down here, which <laughs> evidently is not happening. Yeah, so. you, you want Nebraska to hit? You want Kansas? We need right. everyone to get freeze hit. over. <laughs> give us your birds. <laughs> <laughs> Please send them here. Yeah. <laughs> so, but do you guys get like even for how is it early right now or? For kind of the prime hunting when that you guys are used to year to year no normally Mid second week in november now normally opening like the, the beginning of november is very good like huh. very good yeah and and that's what's surprising that it hasn't but uh, we're not sure if we saw quite a few big ducks in teal season so the the birds push down in groups and and with the the little water up north uh uh, on the in oh, it was in Dakotas that were just like in, in all the breeding yeah the prairie did, bottle it was pretty pretty it was, they're in a drought right yeah, now it was so dry season, so yeah. I'm curious to whether birds push down early and that's what, and we're just catching the tail end of that first half of migration or if they just haven't mm -hmm. pushed down yet because it's it's a weird year we're not seeing as many and, and we should but I don't know where do you guys go to see kind of where the birds are at for like migration pushes and things like that ducks on the yeah. yeah, the migration reports. The migration reports. Yeah. yeah, and then we text our. I mean, I'll yeah, text we, people. Yeah, we text everybody. We, Further north. Up, yeah, even we, up in like to Nebraska, Kansas area, or are you talking north Nebra Texas? Nebraska, Kansas, Oklahoma. Yeah. Really? So you got people kind of throughout the entire flyway, just a bit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
when can I expect birds? Yeah, yeah right. Yeah. <laughs> but, what, one of my buddies, Cody, guides like South, North Dakota, um, Arkansas, like all from here, all through the Dakotas. And so I ask him, I'm like, hey, are y'all seeing birds up there? And he's like, yeah, <laughs> they should start moving down. I'm like, okay, cool. <laughs> <laughs> You guys ever tra- ever travel up there earlier in the season to try to get on some? I, I never have personally. I was supposed to. Uh, I was supposed to go to Nebraska a couple weeks ago, or no, in October. Wait, when was when was that tournament? Uh, October twentieth or something. I was supposed to go up to Nebraska, and then my professor scheduled a uh, rescheduled a test to that trip, and so couldn't go and had to just. Well, granted, it worked out because him and I got to go fish a tournament, but uh, but yeah, I, I'm. This year, especially, I'm taking trips to Oklahoma. I'll be taking trips to hunt in New Mexico. I'll be taking a trip to Arkansas. And so I'll be going all over. That's exciting. Arkansas is worth it. I had a blast last year. Yeah. Yeah. So much fun. So we'll see. Yeah, I mean, Matt, Matt, he lives outside the Dallas area-ish. And, I mean, he said he's covered up in birds right now. That's true. Yeah, North Texas. So um, I'm... My logic is, you know, if they're there, and I know they were there last week because I was texting some buddies that also live in that area, and it sounds like they're just camping out there right now. And then um, just they haven't had a reason to leave at the moment. You know, what I saw a lot of the time, like whenever I would go, like try to go scout, was I'd pass neighborhoods with big ponds, and they would be full. I mean, like, really. Stock full, like you could shoot one shell and you'd get like a four day limit, like full <laughs> four <full>. day limit. <laughs> like obviously, like that's not gonna happen, but like it, it was crazy. Like they they were packed, like really? all the neighborhood ponds around Dallas, mm-hmm. like just packed. Hmm. Like not that you know, Dallas has enough water to hold all of the birds in Texas, but like I, I feel like they get comfortable in a spot with open water and they just chill. Yeah, try to eat it out as much as they can before they move. And maybe that's also kind of like an after effect of the drought, you know, up north. Maybe they're just going to where they can, you know, hang out and, and eat as much as they can because they can't mm-hmm. eat up there at the moment, you know. Yeah. But uh, what are some cool hunts? What are you guys looking forward to this this hunting season? You guys traveling anywhere? Any any hunts? Steven, you already shared kind of where where you're heading. Yeah. Jake, Jake, you going anywhere? Yeah. yeah. Uh, wherever Steven wants to bring me. <laughs> I'm <hoping for> it. <laughs> I don't know if he stops complaining about when I. <laughs> He might, he might get invited again. Uh, I don't know if I call it complaining. It's more just badgering you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Weekend after Thanksgiving, we're doing kind of like a family deal. Me, my dad, brothers, cousins. Uh, we're going to a goose hunt outside of Abilene. Okay. So a three-day hunt after Thanksgiving. So that should be fun. Should be a good time. But you may plan on going back north. Um. At all? Hopefully. So last year it was really a last-minute thing. It was, um, like first week of christmas break i get a random text from my grandpa and he's like hey you doing anything this weekend i'm like no he goes okay well you're taking your cousin arkansas and y'all are going duck hunting i said okay (laughs) he's like merry christmas i'm like cool (laughs) so i mean i i hope so um my buddy harrison really wants me to go up to lubbock on a a goose hunt with him um i'm not sure if i'll be able to make it happen um but i'm i'm hopeful yeah I'm I'm testing things out this year. Uh, I work on a ranch in Hondo, which is west of San Antonio. For people who don't know where Hondo is, but I'm testing out West Texas birds this year. I I don't. I'm curious to see. I I went to school down south, did that whole scene, and from what I've heard and, and what I saw at the tail end of season last year when I got on that ranch, uh, a lot of cranes and a lot of. Uh, specs a lot of geese and so i'm gonna try and get on that uh know a lot i I worked for a farmer uh this past summer and so i have a lot of access to land and whatnot over there and so i think it'd be pretty easy to get access to to property and to fields so i'm trying doing that too i think got a busy season sounds like trying hey last last season as a college student i gotta like make the most of it yeah yeah Yeah. So we got, what, is there two seniors here, right? Or, or just one? Senior, like, be a super but, senior. Yeah, I, I'm a super senior. Super senior. But, Stephen, you're you're wrapping up school, what? This, this May. This May? Yes, sir. So what's on your mind kind of now that you're kind of on the tail end of college? 
go to grad school, stay in as long as possible. <laughs> yeah, no, uh, uh, as far as my future goes, I have no idea. I, I mean, I do have an idea, but what I end up deciding to do, I have a lot of different options, whether I go manage ranches, whether I go to grad school and pursue uh, more of a management research position and potentially try and work for Ducks Unlimited, mm -hmm. uh, something like that, and then just looking back and wishing I hunted more. You know? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but no, definitely I've made the decision that whatever I do, I'll definitely, it's going to involve Ducks. Mm -hmm. So. Do you think after college you'll be coming back to College Station or going back to kind of the area that we were hunting this morning a lot of the t time to try to bring back old memories? Oh, yeah, for sure. Uh, I, I mean, the, e the Eagle Lake trip during teal season and then opener of Big Duck is like uh, almost a tradition. Yeah, it's been yeah I was hearing stories about like that. Like five, five or six years straight now. Where so it's kind of like, yeah, no matter how far Matt is away from us now, like we always find a way to meet up mm -hmm. at, yeah. during that time of the year and, and make it happen just because, you know, even this year's been a little slow, but it's, I mean, that's that's really not part of, like, the big picture for us is, mm -hmm. is just getting together. The memories. Because we don't, yeah. you know, that's going to be harder and harder every year to do. So yeah. I hope that continues Yeah, for It'll the be, future. Be you'd be challenging yourself year, year after year yeah. Absolutely. as life gets busy. Yeah. Give uh, the listeners a kind of a snippet of kind of just a quick story of, like what it's like teal hunting in the Eagle Lake area. <laughs> um, I, I'll share like my favorite memory from all time. Uh, it, it was two years ago, so it was three of us and shooting light, like timer went off, like, okay, ready to go. Uh, and we had a group of 11 birds come in and there were th three shooters, so nine shells, 11 birds, <laughs> all 11 fell. And we had a limit within like 20 minutes, like hot and heavy. It, my dad always says, I don't want to go teal hunt. It's more work because you shoot your limit so fast because there's just so many birds. He's like, it's, you spend more time setting up. I hope setting I never up. get like that, yeah. man. You, <laughs> you spend more time setting uh, up and cleaning up than you do. Uh, actually, actually shooting, yeah. hunting. Yeah. Shooting. yeah. yeah. Got it. Got it Dang a lot. Dang phones. Yeah, I've heard, I heard that's a normal thing, where if you don't shoot your limit, regardless of how many people are hunting in the first hour, that's not, yeah, that's not normal. Spe speaking <laughs> of Matt. <laughs> he just called me. No, okay. Matt, yeah. Yeah, he's probably wondering oh. if he has to set out decoys or not. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> we need to let him know. Yeah, I tried to call oh. him earlier. I think he's napping, so, yeah. so I'll call him back later. But uh, I think, like, another good I – mean, I, I've only hunted Eagle Lake area, Garwood Eagle Lake, a couple times, and – I mean, every time it's been all right. I mean, not today, sadly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, uh, like, to really showcase, like, how good of an area that it can be, or, like, that it is normally, the dive bomb hunt opening day at Teal. Yeah. They had, what, 16-man limit in, like, 45 minutes? Yeah. Something was, ridiculous. Yeah, so the spot that we hunt was... Um, very close to them and <laughs> you could tell it was them yeah. it was an absolute war zone yeah it so was, 16 it was crazy yeah so 45 so that's 48 shells at a group so imagine 48 like if every single person shoots all three shells that's 48 yeah gosh so just imagine hearing that in the distance yeah it was, i hope they're wearing hearing protection yeah <laughs> shout out to tetra here yeah, slight, slight plug 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 no. <laughs> I am a believer <laughs> in touch with here. I am now. Yeah. yeah. But, um, but yeah, that like, Eagle Lake, that teal, that would be something to experience, I think. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's, 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 it's the a whole, really fun That time. whole little rice belt you have, Eagle Lake and even El Campo, Garwood, uh, even over kind of toward Tallis, so we will be tomorrow. And even still kind of in creeping into Brookshire Patterson area yeah. it's still really good which yeah. is closer to Katy it's kind of outside of Katy doing so. it Waller area yeah yeah which still it's still very good for teal yeah. also we hunt I mean I shot I hunted I did a little solo hunt teal season and I shot six birds and four shells like it, they're just they're just so many birds it's mm -hmm. you have to pick them out cause to, to not go over your limit because you just you're shooting yeah if you're not if you're not ready for it it's a lot to take in yeah. like you got to really focus you're in groups of 20 and 30 like every like every like five minutes in your face yeah, yeah. now uh, something that like I think that we need to touch on is how hard it is around here public land hunting 
right? Mm-hmm. Like around it's college. Like, oh, in Eagle Lake, yeah. It's yeah, like yeah. E- e- Eagle Lake, Lake area. Like, there's almost nothing. I mean, where I hunt teal season, um, I've gone Eagle Lake, I think, once during teal, but I normally go up to a place more north Texas, and I took my buddy on his first ever duck hunt um, last teal season, and I was, you know, calling and using the jerk rig, so I was shooting, and I said, hey, they're going to swing around on our right, and I, I said, like, as soon as you see him, pull the trigger. He shoots once and four birds fall. <laughs> like, it's thick. Um, but, like, the public land in Texas, like, it's it's not that it's not there. It's just it's hard to get to. Like, it's well, it, it's far. 97% of Texas land is privately owned. Yeah, and that, that goes back to the Spanish when they came to Texas because they were, everyone that came over, they were giving them buttloads of land. Yeah. And then now, you know, well, they ended up selling off parts to make money or whatever. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And now people are holding it, and, you know, they'll sell it. Kind of like the Four Sixes Ranch sold for, like, what, six, sixty-six, I'm not sure. $666 million, something six. ridiculous. I mean, uh, the, the thing is, that's how a very large portion of Texas makes its living, off of selling, yeah. selling hunts. Yeah. So that's a big source of revenue for a lot of people, and how a lot of people live every, every year, that's what they live off of, is yeah. what they make during hunting season. Do mm-hmm. a lot of hunters at uh, Texas a are they out-of-state hunters, or are a lot of them from Texas? What's from, from what Texas? About the one, what about the ones that do come from out-of-state? Um, like, like, do they, what do you mean? Like, if students from out-of-state, uh, how can they have an, an opportunity to hunt oh, in okay. this area? Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. what would you recommend? So, they've kind of touched on how public land or private land we're talking public or pri- private private land is hard to hunt so yeah. there's little public land private land is hard because in texas i don't know how leases work ev- everywhere else but almost all of the land is leased so mm-hmm. why would they let mm-hmm. some college kid hunt when they can have a guide pay them a couple thousand dollars right and yeah. so uh really it's who you know it's not what you know and mm-hmm. a lot of that goes for for life but uh if, if you're an out-of-state hunter definitely get plugged in with Ducks Unlimited chapter and just meet as many people as you can because you'll get you'll you will get the opportunity to hunt and then also the coast the coast is mm-hmm. it's all public it, I mean make sure you're hunting in legal areas but hunting the coast is pretty pretty easy yeah. even for someone that's kind of like bootstrapping it trying to kind of freelance it in a in a way you think even I mean. We, I've had some buddies who did, they wanted to go hunt and I couldn't make it and they're like, where should I go? I said, go to the coast and they'll go shoot the limit of redheads. I mean, it's not. And that's on public. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's on public. Hmm. So. And public's public. pretty good with, because uh, like to hunt public land, you have to get the public land permit. Um, and once you get that, they'll like. Oh, not at the coast. Oh, not, not at the coast, but like every, anywhere else, uh, Texas Parks and Wildlife will send you like a booklet it's like an inch thick of all the public land in texas mm-hmm. so like finding the public land you just look in the book mm-hmm. um but like seeing birds on it or whatever is easier said than done <laughs> yeah. and is it pretty big amounts of public land where you're not really competitive competing with spots or anything like that or how is, how's that situation <laughs> no no no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> competition for i mean I have a, a buddy, who, and he's he only hunts his public land, and uh, they get to their, they sleep in their spots. Like mm-hmm. you, if you want a spot, you you got to sleep in it, and uh, and if not, and you expect to either have to go talk to someone because if you're not paying attention and you're not shining your lights at people, someone will set up 50 yards from you and stuff. So it, there's a lot of interesting people you have to deal with in public land not to say it's not good because mm-hmm. definitely have had plenty of good public land hunting but you have a lot of people like from arkansas i was like man you're, you're spoiled like i only hunt public land well texas like there's very few like there's not much public land to for starters and if you want to go hunt public land and have a 10 acre pond with 10 hunters mm-hmm. and each hunter gets their own acre and you're just lined up around i mean good luck but I mean, I, I've been cussed out numerous times on public, like either while I'm in my spot or trying to get to my spot. Um, this morning, my friend Sydney went out for North. Or, so Texas is split north and south zone. South zone opened last week. North zone opened today. She went and hunted north zone opener with her fiance today, and um, she said that 
45 minutes before shooting light, someone with an airboat ran over their decoys and set up 50 yards from them. Yeah, welcome <laughs> well, to Welcome it. to Texas Public. <laughs> Jeez. A lot of hunters in Texas, so that's yeah, that's yeah. part of the problem, too. It's There's a lot, a lot of people. And yeah. Not that Texas hunters are inconsiderate, but it's just when you have... It's competitive. It's very, very competitive down yeah. here. Mm-hmm. Have you guys ever thought of, uh, like, your dream hunts of a place and situation where you guys want to hunt? <sighs> what do you think? Hmm. I mean, besides, like, Argentina. <laughs> uh, what about, let's play, say, United States. Okay. Where do you hunt? Let's start with, with Jake over there. Oh, don't start with me. i got to think about it. you got to think about it? Yeah. All right, well, Dude, let's, uh, start on this side. a lot side. of options. I got it. I know what I want. You know? Okay. Uh, I originally, I was going to say timber, but I want a field. I want a field hunt. I want field. green heads. We're just talking about that. Yeah, I know. Yeah. I know we were talking about this one <laughs> because I want to do it. Yeah. <laughs> I want a field hunt. I watched. Some Here, I gotta tell everyone first because I'm not gonna let you say it. I don't, you might have said it already, but anyone listening or watching, this guy has not shot a greenhead. That that is how. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'm like cursed, my, but I've shot. Yes. I've shot cinnamon teal. We shot a black scoter yeah. in Texas. A black, like a sea duck. I, like, of course, we get that, but I have not shot. I've shot everything except for a greenhead and a golden eye. We need to get this guy in a field. Lay out blinds and yeah. some green heads. I want down. that, and then I want all. Th- I want snow specks and <laughs> candidates. I want it all. <laughs> so I that, want that's your it hunt. all. That's your hunt. Yeah. You I want. Uh, that's what you're thinking. All right. But no, I think mine's really similar. Uh, I really love a field hunt. That would be awesome. But I feel like another thing that would be really cool, like Alaska. Yeah. Hunting yeah. Alaska would be awesome. That would like be number two. Brant, Harley's. Mm-hmm. Like you know, like the 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 ones that like we would only dream of getting down here. Yeah. Like you can get about all of them in Alaska. I think that would be amazing. Yeah. I don't know. I just I've hunted over rice and water on the prairie my entire life. So that's pretty much all I've done. Um, I yeah. We were just talking about it this morning. A field hunt for mallards, I think, is <laughs> is really up there. I mean, that's like. Something I've, I I wouldn't even know how to, like, I've never, don't even know what it's like at all. Yeah, I don't so. even know what it's like to shoot a mallard. I don't even know how they work. <laughs> <laughs> what, is, what does a mallard look like again? It's, it's pretty great. Yeah. It feels pretty good I have, you see the green I've fall. seen two mallards in Eagle Lake. It was me and Matt and one of our other buddies. And it was, like, 10 o'clock. We're just hanging out in the blind. We have nothing to do, so we're just sitting there, not paying attention, and they dropped out of the sky, like decoyed the, right the, in the front heavens, of us. Right I have out no of the idea heavens. where they came from. We're just sitting there, and we all unload at them, and not a single shot hits, <laughs> and they just fly away. That's that's how the, I excel the, at shooting right feathers. there. Yeah. Well, uh, so my answer should be kind of vague. I am very new to duck hunting. I've gone okay. duck hunting three times. Today was the third time, so very inexperienced compared to these guys or really any of the duck hunters so at this point just kind of any place with some good ducks that nice. close enough nice. for me to shoot yeah there you go <laughs> no. this year I, I think it's going to be my mission this year to try to get these guys on a field hunt because i got plenty of contacts up north where as if you guys are willing to drive all right uh, you we'll drive figure it out yeah. Yeah, we'll figure, figure it out, it out. we will we will trade we were limited to college station because of banquet if we if, since we had banquet i was i wanted to take uh Derek to the ranch in Honda where I work and mm. I crane season I think might be open over there already. Oh it's Tempt- open maybe I think so. I, mean, yeah, I think that's already because, open. Because zones are crane different. and geese or east and west, right? No, cranes have zone A, B, and C. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, geese, geese have east and, west, east and west, west and then ducks have north and south. North and south. But uh and we have cranes, we have geese, yeah, we have planes. cinnamon teal, all at that ranch. And so I was going to take you over there, but that's a five-hour drive from here. And so yeah. we're not that crazy. Mm-hmm. We're not that crazy. I mean, we are. But we, we, <laughs> yeah. Derek's on his schedule. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah it's your it's really fault. Derek's fault. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, I'm yeah. no, I want to I wanna get you guys on a field hunt, and that way you guys, to see your eyes light up how close those the ducks and the geese come in. And yeah. Get, a, get mean, on a honker hunt and everything, so. I've never, I've never even seen, like, we don't have candidates. I don't know. See, like, I see them in a People park. People listening to this are probably like, what the I see them in a park, but like, hunt, I've never, ever seen one while hunting. So, 
I was, I'm in a lot of, like, waterfowl Facebook pages. Like, th this is how, like, desperate I would be, like, to shoot a Canada. Um, yeah, this uh, is what this podcast is turning into, like, a plea to take yeah, it. Like, <laughs> please, please, we have please, no jobs. Else, like, sir, let the, us thing, know. the thing about this is, it's like, I, like, even myself, for how, how involved I've been in, with Campus Waterfowl over the years, you just never even think, like, you, you assume everyone's knows or hunted greenheads, but it's like, never. you just, but, sometimes, yeah, you never. Oh, I have model ducks, too. We'll throw that on the table. Who wants a model duck? <laughs> <laughs> and, I, and, and I think for people listening, it's just, it gives them a chance to learn, like, how fortunate they are to be where they're at. If they are in the greenheads or how yeah. different yeah. Er, different areas are for even just a few hours or things like that. Uh, and that's the, that's the thing about Campus Waterfowl is, like, we have this huge community on social media now. And, and, the, and that's the power of social media, too, is, like, anyone and everyone can send each other a direct message and just start a conversation and lead into a friendship and then having mm -hmm. shared hunts and things like that, trading hunts. And hopefully Campus Waterfall can do that uh, for, for some of you guys. Where yeah, you like, through these travels and meet some of the students, yep, hopefully you get you guys in there. Yeah. Yeah. Get you guys on a hunt. So I met my taxidermist through Campus Waterfall. Like, <laughs> yeah, of, shout of out to Alyssa. Things. Yeah, thanks Alyssa <laughs> um, and Micah. At Feathered Arts Taxidermy. There you go. Throw it in. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Shameless yeah. plug. Yeah. <laughs> they just announced today. Did you see it? Did you read her post? Moving back to Texas. Yeah. They're, um, <laughs> he's a fishing guide also, and so they've been trying to get a place in Matagorda. So yeah. pretty pumped that they're going to be back in Texas. It'll be a lot easier to get birds to them. <laughs> there we go. Yeah. So Now, Alyssa, she was uh, one of the interns for Campus Waterfall a few years ago, so yeah. appreciate all her help helping out with Very cool. Helping us run the page. Couldn't, couldn't get here without her help, so, and all the interns help. So. You want to talk about this coot that's sitting right in front of us? I mean, they're going to ask. If they're watching it, they want to know. <laughs> all right. And for the listener's sake, we got a, a very nice coot decoy here on our table. Yeah. Bit firm believer <laughs> in, in, coot. in the coot spread. I'm just throwing it out there. It, every Not as confident these coys. Like, you're pulling out a full straight, spread. Straight spread of coots. <laughs> yeah, so you're talking about these coots all morning. <laughs> I'm telling you, it works. Yeah. 15 coots a day you, limit. You can be, my my father, Mr. Waterfowl Guide himself, thinks it's so dumb, but I swear by it. It is, it'll kill ducks, especially on big water. Yeah. Big yeah, water when, coot decoys. Okay, so your your birthday was what, three three weeks ago? Yeah. I, I, I didn't even have to think about what to get Stephen for his birthday. I want coot decoys. <laughs> it was coot decoys. <laughs> <laughs> That's just what it was. Didn't even have to think. Not a second, man. I already knew. <laughs> You got a massive squirrel right behind us. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know, you guys got a fox squirrel? Yeah. You guys got fox, fox squirrels on here? Oh, yeah. Big ones. Didn't know that. Gray squirrels are huge, too. Especially on campus. Oh, the squirrels oh, on yeah. campus are I think sad. campuses across the country are known for They have yeah. a whole. They, they have squirrels. a whole Instagram page for the squirrels on campus. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Eggy squirrels. Mm. What, uh, let's touch on kind of egg, some uh, eggy con traditions. What uh? What's the <laughs> what's the main or like the biggest tradition here on campus? Probably the wildcat, right? Wildcat. Yeah, I mean, midnight yell. Midnight yell. And these are all just chants. That you so midnight yell. So for all those people who don't know, so yeah, calls the cult, whatever. We're no. not. We're not. <laughs> we put the cult in culture. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, it's, I love it. <laughs> so A and M used to be a military school and whatnot, and so through that we have built a, a legacy of tradition and everything, and just a lot of stories and things that a lot of a lot of schools kind of get left behind. But the Aggies have managed to hold on to it all and, and put it into tradition. So whether it's Elephant Walk, where all the seniors walk around campus for the last time together, or Midnight Yell, where we all practice the yells the day before the game, uh, to I, yes, yeah. A big event. A big event. We have this mm. bit, a campus-wide event where every single student organization goes out and does a volunteer project. It's like one of the largest volunteer projects, like mm. every year. So, mm -hmm. but yeah, like what, what's the saying we say have, we have on campus? Uh, if it happens twice, it's tradition. Something like that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, but it's just you know, running joke. <laughs> yeah, but then we have the core of cadets, which everyone kind of no one really understands. But yeah, so going back to being a military school back in the day uh, um, that kind of developed into the Corps of Cadets which is a kind of like I'm, I'm not in the Corps so I don't um, I don't necessarily know too well my dad was but like it's kind of like a military situation kind of thing kind of like a souped up ROTC yeah but, but so better. there's 
there's five senior military academies in the U.S. right now. I used to, I used to go to one of them in South Carolina called the Citadel. Um, so I was part of the South Carolina Corps of Cadets. Um, and so it's really similar to what they do at A&M, except A&M, they can go to, they can go to class in civilian clothes. And it like blew my mind when I, when I learned that. They can? Yeah. They, they don't. They choose to wear their uniforms. No, they get in trouble. Yeah, they have to wear. I mean, they, they, they'll get in trouble, but they, I mean, the. They, they can also go off campus not in uniform. Okay. I, I had mm-hmm. to wear uniform on leave. Like, every time I left really? base, like, we call it base, but it's campus, I had to be in full leave uniform. Mm. How would they, like, the 12th man? Oh, uh, yeah. The, the 12th man is um, a really big tradition, too. Um, yeah, that spans back to, God, way back in football um, when we were still at all men's, you know, military academy. Um, this, we were getting our butts handed to us in a football game and this cadet came down from the stands put pads on and stood on the sidelines the entire game like I'm ready to go and so that that's why we're called the 12th man he's got a statue up his name's E. King Gill yes E. King Gill yeah so that's that kind of tradition so uh, for at every Texas A&M football game in the student section you do not sit down during the game you stand the, the entire, entire time and mm-hmm. entire time uh, and kind of tradition if the team ever needs someone we we support the the football team and by the way which they never will but <laughs> you know oh, the uh, horse laugh instead of booing oh yeah we don't boo we hiss yes we saw mops <laughs> yeah aggies good bull aggies don't boo oh yeah, yeah. we're okay. not we're classy like it that w- hey it must have worked against Alabama. Oh, it did. Oh, it Alabama. did. It did. Yeah. Hey, it took a second. The twelfth man was definitely there. Oh, oh it was yeah. so it, loud. It, it was we, insane. We needed our Tetra. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like, Shameless yeah. plug. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That stadium gets Part two. definite, dude. Yeah, it's uh, definite. It, and, and the crazy thing, too, is that when it gets quiet, like, when it gets really quiet sometimes, like, you could swear you could hear a pin drop. Like, yeah. obviously not, because there's, like, 100,000 people in mm. there. But, like, it gets quiet. Whenever we're on offense, it's quiet. Whenever we're on defense, it is the loudest thing you'll hear. Yeah. You can hear it for, I mean, heck, I live, I don't know, about a mile off campus, and you can hear the band practicing. Mm-hmm. I wish that you would have been able to come. You would understand everything, and you have a better grasp on, like, everything. In your last week? Yeah. The yeah. Auburn game? The second largest Just crowd in Kyle Field, Kyle Field history. The intensity of noise. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. I'll be around. We'll get to another. We'll get to a game in time. Yeah, for sure. So. I should have taken you to the hockey game last night. That would have yeah. been fun. Hockey. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> Absolutely not. I mean, the SMU yeah. 10 to 1. It's amazing. No. I'm a, de- I'm a diehard te- Stars fan. This is fan, Texas. But we do not. Yeah. This no is hockey. Not hockey. Just, no hockey here. Hockey's great. Changed my mind. <laughs> All right. Give me. I need a story from, from each of you. Kind of your best or most memorable <sighs> waterfowl. All right. <laughs> I think we have to have Jake. I know you're first. looking at me, Crocker. <laughs> yeah, you, you only have you have three hunts. Yeah, I've been on three <laughs> hunts. I've only got one story. Uh, <laughs> my first time duck hunting, we were out, and before shooting light, we just saw this one single duck just kind of swimming <laughs> around in the pond. And you know, obviously, we're just you know watching him, seeing what he's doing. We're not gonna shoot him. It's not shooting light. So then, you know, the minute hits, still very dark by the way. Yeah, it's still pretty dark. So you know, we load a well. Minute hits, and we all unload on him. There's probably six of us around there. We on all a look. single duck. <laughs> yeah, on a single duck. Yeah. You missed. Well, oh, no, they shot and then shot. Oh, and it was not just all one, two, it. three. It was boom. Oh, he still swam. Boom, oh, boom, boom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was like like these two people okay, shoot and then like, like maybe firing. like these. No, people. no, no. no. <laughs> it wasn't just like bang, bang, bang. The firing squad. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, it but, was invincible. So we all do that, and it. Uh, <laughs> he's still alive somehow, so, and he swims away to the other side of the pond. So we're just sitting there waiting hoping some more ducks come in and he just kind of slowly makes his way back to us so we're like all right go again mm-hmm. so then we all start you know popping off again and he's still swimming <laughs> he swims to the back of the pond and he kind of stays there for the rest of the hunt we don't see uh, any of the ducks at all the mm-hmm. entire time and uh we can tell he's a little slower but he's still swimming he's still you know kicking pretty well and so you know uh trey the guy who owns the land who was with us mm-hmm. he went out on the boat you know trying to take care of him and he kept swimming away from him. Well, he finally, you know, got one good shot on him, taught, uh, brought him in the boat, brought him back. And it turned out to be a green head, but it was more gray, less green on his head. It was a 
Nice, fat, plump farm duck. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh... The best part about the story is I got the curls in my truck right now. <laughs> yeah, farm duck <laughs> curls. <laughs> oh, man. First platinum yeah. curls. Yeah. Uh, silver fox good, curls. It's a pretty good Silver one. fox. It's a pretty good one. <laughs> All right, I guess, I guess I'll go next. I mean, I don't know. This isn't a really exciting What We talked about it earlier a yeah. little bit, but, like... I don't know, it's just, like, so stuck in my head because it was, like, a super cool moment, but... Uh, this was teal season in Eagle Lake again. I guess this was two years ago. Now. Two years ago. It was that. It was that good hunt that yeah, we talked about, ago. where the a group of eleven came in. And, but um, uh, we were we were about finishing up, and we just had a a double come in from from our left side of the blind, and Stephen was standing to the left of me, and they came in, they decoyed, and then real quick just like took a 90 degree turn and and just hauled right right just straight away from us and uh, they were paired right next to each other and like we didn't say anything me and steven were standing right next to each other both pulled up and shot at the exact same time and steven took the one on the left and took the one on the right and they just dropped like in totally in sync like it was just a super cool moment and I don't know, yeah, it's really not that exciting, but it no, was No, it was like, exciting. It, was, <laughs> yeah, that's it doesn't it sound super moment. exciting, but it was just, it was such a cool moment, because, like, just, there was no communication. We just, like, synced up. No one like, even said take them. It no, was just, <laughs> it, we sh- pulled up and shot, like, the exact same moment. You couldn't even distinguish yeah. the two shots from each other, and they just both dropped. That's really how you cool. know you hunt a lot together. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. honestly, when we hunt, them. when us, me, him, and Matt hunt, I can't even. We don't call out anything. We don't even call a shot. We just, we all just know when we to know, shoot. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's kind of weird. I guess not most people do that, but we just all kind of, we just know, like, when, mm-hmm. but, yeah. Who's next? I've got a lot of stories, but I'll just tell, I'll tell you one. I'll tell you about my, my little band. Oh, yeah. So, uh, this was a solo hunt. Um, I, I was, this was public land, actually, one of my few public land hunts mm-hmm. on, on the coast. Um, I walked, I had a whole kayak behind me, and I walked two miles pulling a kayak behind me <laughs> in knee-deep mud, or portions of knee-deep mud, mm-hmm. all the way to this one spot. And this was a solo hunt, and I uh, hunted, shot, shot four teal, and, and was just kind of chilling, and then uh, I look up, and there's this pintail circling decoys. I'm like, oh, okay, okay. And uh, he was just circling and circling and circling, and he wasn't coming down. I was like, you know what? Like, eventually he's going to say no. And so I'm like, I'm just going to shoot. And so I, boom, missed, boom, missed, boom, just clipped him barely. And uh, he just glided. And I was like, oh, well, I'll, I'll go get him. He's about, he's about 50, 50 yards, which doesn't sound like a lot, but when you're going through knee-deep mud, that's a lot. And so uh, I uh, started going out there, and every time I get close, he just keeps swimming. And away, keeps swimming away, and I'm like, oh my gosh, this stinking bird, like, I, I'm like, have already, I've gone like 20, or no, tw- not 20, 200 yards across the bay, like, trying to get this bird, and, and he just keeps swimming, finally, I get close enough to shoot him, and then we, he, he like, starts, kind of stops, and he starts doing his little diving thing, but got him, and I'm like, the amount, like, I was just so close to just you have fun, Mr. Duck. Like, swim away. I don't care. I'm not chasing you anymore. This is dumb. And I was like, you know what? I'm just going to do it. And I get him, and I pick him up, and I, I see a band, and I'm like, huh. I'm like, well, that's weird. Like, I, don't, I wasn't even excited at first. I was just like, I was just so out of breath and tired. I was like, you, I was so mad at that duck that I, I wasn't even able to be excited. But then afterwards, I was like, yes. And then I was by myself, so, like, I get back to the, to where I put in, and there's this guy fishing, and I'm like, can you take a picture? And he's like, why? And he, like, trying to explain to him a band, and he had no understanding. <laughs> he, he did not. He's like, what is this? And I had long hair back then. He's like, what is this, like, homeless person doing? <laughs> trying to get me to take a picture of Doug, but... Man. Why so goose got metal around its feet? <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. it's so close to letting this duck, like, then I, now every time I shoot a duck and lose it, I'm like, it was banded. Yeah. That like, was the, it, that the was perspective banded. of, like, how many ducks have we shot that were banded that we don't know about? <laughs> Just throwing that one out there for everyone to think about. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> I think, I, I kind of, I showed the video at breakfast this morning, uh, but I got to just... I don't know, this, this is a good funny story, I guess. Um, my buddy Cade, 
It, so it was me, Cade, and two of his buddies. He used to go to University of Wyoming, now he goes to Texas Tech. So he had, it was over Christmas break, like right after the split. So like maybe the week after the second opener, I guess. Um, and we're all hunting Lake Texoma. So me and these three guys, I've hunted with Cade. We hunted with these guys the day before and we go out for the second hunt. And, <clears throat> you know, Lake Texoma, really all that we saw the most of this, the entire season before this was um, just ringnecks and a couple of pentail, um, one mallard, regansers, and of all things, a pair of Canada geese. Um, but we're, where we were sitting, um, <clears throat> this is the highest the water's been in years. So the water's like at our waist, and we're standing in this water behind reeds, like just packed in there. And, you know, we kill a couple ringnecks, but we're like, eh, whatever, we kill these all year. Like, they don't eat good anyway, like, who cares? <laughs> yes, um, they do. <laughs> if, if you do it right, they do. Yeah. But we, we didn't know anything. Not okay. Um, so we were like, oh, stupid, stupid divers. Like, we don't care. Um, and then all four of us see this mallard at the set at the same time. And, like, we all, like, you just hear, like, all, like, one after the other, just, the safety just click. <laughs> and we're all at the exact same, like, kill it! So, like, bah, 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 bah. <laughs> like, it, like, machine gun fire. Like, all, all of us unload all three shots at this mallard. And this duck, like, just glides down to our right and lands in the water. Well, it lands by this tree, and normally you can walk over to the tree, but... We sent one of um, Cade's friends, I think his name's Jason. He went out there and it was like, he almost flooded his waders and like he was still like 30 yards from the stock. So like, there's no way he's getting it. So like, how can we, like, this is the one mallard that we can actually get this year that like, we won't lose. Um, so we're like thinking, how, how can we go get it? Like, we're not swimming because it's 19 degrees outside. Like, the water's, you're gonna freeze. Um, so we're looking in the woods and we see this giant block of foam. And I mean, like, it is as long from me to Jake, and like... It's about four or five feet long. What? Yeah, it's, it's like three or four feet long, and like, maybe three feet tall. And so, we're like, we can sit on that, maybe. And so, Jason <laughs> sits on this thing, and gets a stick, and he starts like, paddling his way over to this mallard. <laughs> so, I have, there's a video on the... Wyoming waterfowl or whatever that they run like Instagram page um, of him just like sitting on this block of foam paddling out for this mallard <laughs> and he almost fell off twice and we're you know over on the shoreline cracking up we're like don't fall like don't die because <laughs> you know with the waders and everything um, like it's it's really serious for the <laughs> that could have been bad but, but we were just cracking up pain. the entire time <laughs> yeah. But, you know, he got the mallard back, so we ended up with a mallard and, um, I think one ringneck that we didn't, like, either purposely lose or, like, that we actually found. Mm -hmm. uh, so we ended up with two birds, but, I mean, on public land, uh, we were grinding that year. We hunted, like, three different lakes. Um, I mean, it sucks that they came down, you know, from Wyoming just for two birds for two <laughs> hunts but i mean it it's the reality of it sometimes it just yeah. encapsulates what we do for ducks yeah i mean for a mallard down here yeah oh, i do <laughs> a lot for a mallard <laughs> <laughs> i do a lot one thing i didn't mention even uh so the reason why texas a and I, this is a question i've been getting a lot recently um is like how do i choose what colleges to go to and this year like to be honest too, Texas A and M has kind of been on the bucket list for quite some time, but they really locked in the spot for this season's collegiate waterfowl tour by being titled the national champions of our twenty twenty one collegiate waterfowl national championship. So every, for the last two years now, um, we've been doing this big tournament in the spring, putting together a sixty four college bracket of all these yeah, colleges. Big. And each section, there's four parts, uh, it's divided by flyway. And so Texas A&M ended up winning. Made, they made it to the foul fours is what we call it. And <laughs> yeah. they, you guys are, yeah, Central Flyway won the mm -hmm. Central Flyway. Mm -hmm. and, right? Yep. 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 Yeah, and then Arkansas State, they were the Mississippi yep. flyway. So 
Um, but Texas A&M, they took it home and won the championship. They beat uh, – who was it? Or the, it? It was Arkansas State, right? I think so. Yeah. yeah. I, the, the people who won it the year before was Bemidji State. No, it was – It wasn't Bemidji? No, it was no. St. Lawrence. Oh, University. yeah, St. Lawrence. Bemidji was runner-up then, I think. Because they, they went really far they the year did, before. Yeah. No, I, we did Montana State. Besides the point. Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't matter. How, okay, I want to talk about uh, how – what was that like on campus when that was happening? Like, did people, um, were students talking about it at all? So In our chapter. What really started it was I saw an Instagram, and I blasted in our group chat. And as soon as I sent one, Steven sent one, like, Him the minute after. Christian and I have, like, followed Campus Waterfowl for, like, a long <laughs> yeah, time. So we, we both sent it, like, almost at the exact same time. And so we started texting. We're like, okay, we have to get everyone to, like, we have to win this. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, you should have seen them. Like, every time the new vote would come out, yeah. Boom. as soon as it came out, every group chat you could think of. Really? Yeah. <laughs> no, I, I sent it to the group, group chats with my class. Yeah. Um, the DU group me. Um, being secretary this last year, I've been running the Instagram and social, or Facebook, so I blew it up on Facebook mm-hmm. and Instagram. I was like, go vote for us. <laughs> um, I mean, if, if you're not, like, <clears throat> I guess, in the know, it wasn't really that big. Like Steven said earlier, like 66,000 students on campus. Like, it's a big campus. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But, like, through the outdoor community, I want to say it was pretty big. A lot of people. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. That's cool to hear. It's definitely <laughs> yeah. a cool experience for yeah. sure. Oh yeah, yeah, and, and and I think it's it's to, when we put it together, it was kind of just for fun, and then it's gotten a lot more competitive than yeah. than what I was kind of thinking it would be. Yeah, oh, it was and, really competitive. It was almost like oh, yeah. like I'm like stressing over something that <laughs> yeah. I shouldn't. I'm like Stephen why? Stephen and I are like. <laughs> You what can't pick heck? colleges against each other and just I think know. it's going to be for fun. Yeah, yeah. yeah. especially you know SEC like, not just like I, I say that like almost jokingly, but I want to say like it's just we're a different level of competitive, like not even in sports, like academics as well. Yeah. Yeah. And like it carried into this, as, as, at least for me. It was cool enough that I called home to tell my parents. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. I, 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 wow. I, I told my dad, I told my dad, my yeah. stepmom to that's, vote. That's yeah. when you know it's serious. <laughs> I think that's good. Yeah. I mean, it it, it gives, the, I think, the listeners and the viewers an idea of like what you guys had to do to win the championship. No, so. actually, we, we didn't do that much. Yeah, no, it, we, 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 we didn't, didn't do, do anything. anything. And so when it comes <laughs> this next year, this next spring, uh are going to now. Really up you guys to, to lock in. Bring and it all. And I think that's what we're gonna have to do. We're gonna have to whoever wins it, they lock in a spot for the tour for next mm-hmm. season. So, so if we win again, does I, that mean you come back? I think that so. means he takes. Oh, no. I think so. Oh, that, that means no, no, he, <laughs> he takes he, us. He's, he's already yeah, taking take, us on a field trip. Uh, yeah, 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 he, he, no. he said it. He said it earlier. He's, he's already, already taking, taking us. us. Okay, yeah, you can come again, and we'll, we'll actually have birds this time. We'll, yeah. We can go to a game. Hey, we'll get them tomorrow morning. I don't think I can argue with that. Yeah, if you went back to back, then I don't have a choice. Yeah. <laughs> so. Oh yeah, we're, tonight. What we're doing tonight? Did I say what we're doing tonight? No, for the the tournament. The tournament for next spring. Oh, yeah, we already shared what we're doing tonight. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm very possibly get squirrel brain. Dog hunting, dog hunting Squ- oh, yeah. Squirrel. Sorry, Razorbacks, yeah. you were listening. But I think we're, this will get brought up in <laughs> next week's podcast, too, because uh, next week, if, you, uh, if you're interested, I will be at St. Lawrence State, or not St. Lawrence State, uh, St. Lawrence University in upstate New York. So, it, and that's a really interesting st- story because they won the tournament the first year. Mm-hmm. Um, and they have only a student body of about, I think I Googled it, it was like 22 or 2,400 people. Really? And they wow. beat, yeah, all of the colleges that yeah. were on that bracket, which is amazing. So we'll be able to hear their stories next year of kind of how that tournament kind of really blew up their DU chapter specifically because um, being upstate New York, hunting's not really the, the first thing a lot of people think about. And for how small all that school is, there's definitely not, not too many hunters mm-hmm. on, out there. So we'll be able to touch on that and how they won so um one thing i always like to end the podcast with is kind of a kind of quick tip for hunting that you might have or some advice for any of the students or anyone out there that's listening um steve i've been waiting for this moment all of my life steven's been waiting for this one he's a a great listener of the podcast so he knew, he knew this question was coming, so Stephen, let's let's hear. What I have a bunch got. of like joke ones, but I won't I won't say them. Uh, one or two. One one yeah one or two. Yeah, so, an, so ap- like two an apple them. a day keeps the doctor away. But an apple a day or what? Oh, I forgot <laughs> no, it. No, I no, waited. No, 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 keep anyone away if you no, throw I it did. hard enough. Yeah, an apple a day will keep anyone away if you throw it hard enough. <laughs> Uh, no, life messes up on the first try. Oh, man. <laughs> my my whole purpose in life is well. 
Well, the dog's <laughs> the, dog, the, dog the dog has distracted me. Dog. No, no but uh, in all seriousness, uh, not so much hunting. Well, it is hunting, too, but just in life and everything. Uh, it's not about what you know. It's about who you know. <laughs> so make network, make those connections, and be social. All the so. And granted, this is social media, but yeah. a, a lot of a lot of people are way, in my in my opinion, are way too invested on their phones. Get get out, go hunt, go uh, practice conservation, hang out with your buddies, and and make some memories. I mean, it's it's fun to kill piles, but at the end of the day, like we didn't kill ducks today, but I I will not forget this trip. Like it was it was a great time, you know. Oh, we all had and time. so just make go make those memories and and have a good time. So that's that's what's really important. That's what you'll remember. It's not you're not gonna remember we killed this many ducks. It's yeah. I remember what. We did so. Absolutely. All right, I guess I'll go next. Um, uh, um, I I got two hunting related. Keep honey buns in your blind bag. Oh, <laughs> yeah, that was, that was so nice. <laughs> <laughs> just kept us to, alive just to today. clear things up, he put an entire box of honey buns in his hunting bag today. It wasn't just. A, it was it was the big honey buns, <laughs> like like, like the, the the big ones. Um, but yeah, I put an entire box in my blind bag. Um, but no, on top of that, like I want to say, like you get out of it what you put in. But I mean, that's not always the case, especially with hunting. Like it's really dependent on the birds. Like we found out today, like they spent what a couple weeks flooding this this oh, this pond and roller chopping working it. on yeah. Yeah. yeah fixing water lines fixing pumps and yeah. we didn't kill anything but i mean like scouting wise get out there and scout i want to say that's one of the like if not the biggest thing um get on the x not necessarily get on x but like the x like where birds want to be um that's where you need you need to try to set up as close as you can to that um so yeah, get out there and try to find the birds. You'll have more successful hunts. Yeah, I would say uh, at all cost, pack everything you need for the hunt the day before. <laughs> Put it in your truck. I can't tell you how many like deer hunts I've been on that I didn't do that. I would just pack the morning of or like an hour before. I'd be missing ammo. One time I missed a gun. Uh, <laughs> hey, one time he forgot his waiters. <laughs> don't, don't forget the time at committee hunt where they woke me up and all I had was my calls. We get to the boat ramp and my waiters, my gun, my blind bag. I had nothing besides my calls with me at the boat ramp and we drove like 45 minutes. So it was too late to yeah. go get them. Packed the day before. Yeah. Yeah. That, that, that was a big mistake. I think... Uh, Really, the only piece of advice is kind of building off Steven's thing. It's kind of the same thing, but, like, just just don't let opportunities pass you by. Like, if, if there's an open door or a way to get your foot in the door, take take that chance. Take that opportunity. Don't let that just pass by. And, and more than likely, that door is open for a reason, and, and you're going to get something out of out of that opportunity. Don't, you know, don't just back out of something last minute. If, you, if you're if you going to commit to something, do it. And, um yeah, that's, absolutely. That's really I mean, two years ago, some guy told me to go to a DU meeting, and so I went, and now I'm an officer, and I'm here with all these great guys, meeting all these awesome exactly. people. Mm-hmm. Just take them when you see them. So, and seek out opportunities too. Yes. Be, oh, definitely. Be, be proactive. Be very proactive in yeah. rather than doing. reactive. Yeah. Um, I was told when I was younger, say yet, yeah, like, for most, almost all opportunities, like obviously not like anything illegal or bad but say <laughs> like if someone offers you something say yes I mean, like, I, I, this I, guy. I, I have to clear it up this I mean so, someone's gonna hear it and be like oh but I mean like if someone's like oh could you help me with this like say yes because it could lead to something be- better down the road for you it's gonna open more it's gonna open more doors yeah Steven said it probably two three times throughout the podcast you know uh, it's not what you know until you know yeah. make connections meet people and that's not just to kill ducks, you know. That's it's for building yeah, that's and ships yeah. and everything else. So, yeah, absolutely. All right, you guys feel, feeling good? Yeah. Ready to finish up? Great. All right. Well, thank you again for listening to the Campus Waterfowl Podcast. Greatly appreciate your support. Uh, like I said earlier, next week I will be at St. Lawrence University, and I think we're doing a little diver hunting up there, so it'll be a lot of fun. Uh, getting back after those divers on some, I don't maybe big water? I'm not sure if we're going to be on big water or not, but we'll see. Uh, but thank you again and uh, if there's anything that you guys need from me feel free to reach out on campus waterfowl and make sure to tune into our youtube channel
But that's going to be it for this episode. Thank you again, and have a great day.